Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. That's how you feeling? Yeah, okay. man. Okay. We have nice little songs. Man. That's right. I do uh. love it. As the end of the year and the decade approaches, a lot of us are doing some self-reflection and repairing or preparing our New Year's resolutions. Saving money is one of the top 10 resolutions Woo! every single year. But you don't have to wait until January to get started. You sure don't. It's a year-round thing. That's right. On this Money Monday, we want to give you a few of our personal money management do's and don'ts. You can start using today on your path to financial freedom. Yes! Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, it's, it's never the wrong time to save money right mm -hmm. and to budget yes yeah. i'm a big budgeter you're a proponent of like financial freedom <sighs> not even just that it's like trina can you no i cannot it's not in the budget for the week or for the month or for whatever you say no a lot to people I, yes i do yeah. if it's not in the budget the answer is no yeah yeah <laughs> and you i can't will care. see you next week when this when it's in the budget yeah you have non-negotiables this is i really do yeah now so trina so how do you so like being a celebrity, people mm. automatically feel like, you know, it's always in the budget. So what's your strategy when you're around other people and it's like, yo, that's not in the budget. Is this just something that you just say, you know, I don't care. Or like, no, is there I, a I, certain I, strategy that you use to do that? No, I, I don't care how you feel. It's not my business. Mm -hmm. I know that's right, girl. It has nothing to do with me. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to put myself in debt or I'm not going to go over what I have set aside for certain things. I might have it, but I don't have it for that. Or do you write it down in your budget? Like, I have a, I have a pie graph. That's fine. You have a pie graph, an old school pie graph. Mm -hmm. Old school pie graph. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have a whole Excel spreadsheet and <laughs> It's uh -uh. fine. Mm -mm. It's broken down into months, and then on my very first sheet, I have it so that when I put it in my monthly, it shows up on my my main sheet for the month. Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah, it is, uh, that's fantastic work. Yeah, it is, uh, my gosh. <laughs> well, guys, um, if you follow the show, you know that I've uh, I've struggled with money. It's fine, <laughs> um, but I am I'm absolutely coming into the end of this decade better than I was. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm grateful for, you know, Sister Circle as a platform which has allowed me to um, get other uh, deals and other um, opportunities that I can continue to make extra money that now I'm being much smarter with. Mm -hmm. Holding on to it, paying off some extreme debt. Mm -hmm. And so going into 2020, I can honestly say that I might be a smooth debt free. <laughs> Hello, you know what I'm saying? This is very good for me. This is a big moment. Okay, because I am one of those people that as soon as the credit card people came down to the fam, you freshman, y'all was like, Dillards. What's that maybe about? I right? can, <laughs> maybe I might get a Dillards credit card. Get some outfits. Sure did. Then went and got a whole bunch of Tommy Hill figure. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> guest uh, pants, and I was paying that debt for a long time. So I would suggest, which is what Qua was going to add to the conversation, that don't do that. Don't go, mm -hmm. when they have those people on campus to get credit cards and all that, don't do that. But I am, and I'm also manifest, I'm, I'm saying affirmations mm -hmm. and manifestations that I want money to come to me so that I can save and also live a certain life. Like I'm, I'm affirming myself with uh, prosperity as yes. well. So yes. that is what I am doing. And um, I'm trying to go into the new decade teaching my children more about money management. Yes, yeah. yes. I, I am, yes. See, I am. You have there to you put go. those things out it's as so they are. You have to speak it like it go. Come on, Bible. What about you, Lena? Well, you know, the, I, I, money get on my nerve as well. <laughs> you know, I'm one of them type of people, I used to be one of those type of people, still do sometimes where I don't like to check my accounts. Mm -hmm. at, like, oh if the God, money, like, like the money gonna change or something, or like it's gonna, I'm gonna I'm a look at the account, it's gonna disappear. Right. Know? I have, I used to have that phobia. I'm a lot better with that now, but as far as far as some of the tips that I use to kind of get me by to help me preserve my money, one thing I do is I, uh, I try to take out cash. Mm. And that way I use the cash as the budget for the, the, the petty money. Like if I'm going to have <laughs> petty money, I try very hard to just take cash. I've been doing that lately and that uh, prevents me from spending money. I do keep all of my credit card credit cards at home. And uh, the reason why I have little other credit cards is because at one moment, at one time, I cleared off all my debt, and then my credit was bad because I didn't have no In credit. Debt, right, right, any credit. So I, mm -hmm. I, I got credit cards, and then I keep them below a third of the balance. Mm -hmm. So I try to do that. Um, and then I was taught from a very young age, even though I don't always do this, but every time you get money and take 10% 
regardless, you know, even after, right after tithing, you take 10% and you put it away for your savings and then you don't deal with it. You keep all the credit cards that are tied to it at home. Mm -hmm. Really not a credit card. You might have like a, um, actually you don't even need a credit card. Um, you could just have your account to be, you know, electronic connected to your account. So I just try as best as I can to stop myself from overspending. I also cut out uh, eating out because mm -hmm. I used to eat out all the time. Like especially after sister circle, we used to go and have a good time it. to eat. I stopped that because that's extra money and ridiculous. So just cutting out little stuff that's right. not necessary and carrying cash has been a big I one like that. For, for, me. for the people who don't know, why is it necessary to keep your credit card to a third of the max? Uh, because um, one of the things that I've learned is that uh, creditors, like when as far as your credit is concerned, to clean off your credit all the way is not necessarily going to boost your credit limit. Mm -hmm. um, what they look at is an extended amount of of Your time, the, the, the 12 month like span, exactly. So, the, you know, creditors want you to spend, but they want you to be able to spend properly right. and be able to pay it back. So, um, keeping it under a third actually has helped my credit score go, go up, up naturally mm -hmm. as opposed to clearing mm -hmm. it off. And mm -hmm. then, too, when you clear it off, you think in your mind, oh, I got space. I'm about to go buy something else. Mm -hmm. So, if it's at a third, it's always something Tality. on it. So, you don't want to touch it. You know right. what I'm saying? Because you want it to stay in that, that spot. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm going to tell you another something, too. Just because you're approved for credit doesn't mean you should always accept it because mm -hmm. that messes with your debt to income ratio. Sure enough, it does. really does. And I I had to get to a point where I stopped the uh, the creditors from raising my mm -hmm. amounts because they you can call them and say, hey, I don't want you to raise my amount. I want you to cap it at X amount. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because it's like the more they raise it, that's like, hey, that's that's making my my DTI look look crazy. So I'm mm -mm. just because just because you keep it at a low amount, that's still considered you know income that you can spend. So it messes with your DTI. So but goodness. if you keep it under the third, you you haven't spent it. So right. even even to that, so if, it's, if it's they, actually if good say, on your credit. If if they increase it, that lets them know that you are in good standing with that with that um, credit. But that doesn't mean you it, have it, to accept it, it, it yeah, right? It's in, it, it's in good standing. But number one, you don't have to accept it when they raise it. And number two, because it's in good standing, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's a good thing because they see that as something that you can potentially spend. Mm. If you have DTI. a bad history, though, you know what I'm saying? Because I have a credit card that don't have no really can, no spending limit. Yeah. So well, I don't know them. nothing that y'all talking about. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Benjamin Franklin said it best. An investment in knowledge pays the best interest. So share your Money Monday knowledge at Sister Circle TV.